Hello again. All right, so we got some updates. The uh, good news is we um, we switched the, a the ARs. We had some issues with our flight, requested flight area. Um, so uh, George did a little uh, research and we found a very, very uh, accommodating AR out of uh, South Portland, Maine. So fingers crossed for our inspection this Saturday. I don't want to jinx it. Maybe I did last time. And uh, right now I'm basically going through my infamous punch list. It really is a lot of like just little stuff. Some of the stuff that Levi had mentioned I'm gonna finish up. Um, then more important stuff like well, important the registration holder. I gotta glue that in. I gotta do a logbook entry. We do want to do a compression test before first flight. Uh, some GoPro mounts. You know, see if I can uh, document it. Um, my uh, friend Adam came by from across the way. I think I talked about him building an RV10. He was uh, all excited about this and awesome guy. And uh, one of the complaints I had was the length of the spark plug wire. So he actually has the tool, the crimps, and the spark plug wire because he had to do all of his own on the RV10. So I'm going to attempt that. He actually gave me a test piece of wire that I can uh, work with. Um, I got to take some pictures of the DAR. So I'm going to put the cowling on and uh, pull it outside and uh, Gonna put the door seal gaskets on, uh, some chafe tape, like literally just minor stuff. We'll get down to the nitty gritty, but I'll take you along. match the EGT silicone on the end of the strain relief I uh, also just did the uh, CHTs which I kind of forgot about and then uh, Levi was saying about putting the mouse milk on the the joints so I poured a little bit on the ones I could access to with the mouse milk but this one up here I couldn't really get the bottle in so I took a syringe those always come in handy sucked a little bit out of there like a drug addict and Basically just run it around there so it goes into the seam. I already did this during installation like a year ago, but um, I don't know, he swears by it. So kind of like the wax on the flywheel for the starter engagement. I'm assuming it can't hurt. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty amazing how much gets sucked inside there you know it gets wicked in if you have a controlled dispension like the syringe it took quite a bit but uh maybe it'll all come out of the exhaust who knows but anyway got all the joints lubricated and uh next on my punch list is these hose clamps i don't know if i talked about this before but i even videotaped it because it was uh, a few last week actually but i tried a smaller one and it turned in no, a bigger one, but it turned into a disaster. So I got the proper ones. I'm just going to trim them to the uh, proper length so we don't have like this huge hangover. All right, battery died. Uh, but all I did was trim maybe half an inch off of the end of this. So I replaced these two clamps so they're nice and tight. And one thing, you know, they're always talking about these loose spark plug wires, but they, they're so long. So my newfound friend, Adam, and hangar mate from over there who's building an RV10 um, lent me his MSD 
spark plug wire crimpers gave me a couple of ends and even a piece of wire to practice with now i definitely wanted to change to two lead to three two lead, lead to four lead to five and actually six if i want to be real picky um, so i'm going to try it actually on this one so i'm basically going to cut it so it kind of sits similar to that we'll see how it goes hey we'll give the spark plug wire trimming thing a try so we kind of marked it here i think i kind of wanted to sit you know similar to that so obviously i watched the youtube video msd ignition actually has a good one <laughs> Then the first surprising thing was that there's no copper wires in there. It's like this black thing, but that's the way it is supposed to be. Um, so then you have these special pliers, part number 35051, made by MSD. I don't know how much they cost. Thank you, Adam, for letting me borrow them. And this is a dual crimp, okay? So you just want this flush pull it off and that is what it is okay there's no uh, copper or silver inside then I guess you want to orientate which way you want this to sit so I guess something like that so you push this kind of down in between there and then you use the front part of the crimper and crimp it in okay so it's kind of deceiving because it doesn't look like super tight but if you look at the the one i cut off um it's exactly the same you know sticks out a little bit then you go over with this one you can squeeze these together sorry i'm gonna do it this way and these are the ones that hold on to i guess is what makes it the double crimp Ugh. Right. get these in there and it won't let go until you go all the way through so look at it looks good then uh, a little bit of spit on there so these boots do pull off um, put it back on make sure that is in there properly as far in as it can go and oh that satisfying click that goes on there and I really like that so now it looks like it was actually meant for this engine so can't really rotate any more than the other ones That was really cool. Easy tool to use. And now we have spark plug wires that are the same or the correct length. Look, no more rubbing up against the uh, fuel line. These sit nice. Um, I'm gonna leave this clamp in here. I actually adjusted them because this was sitting kind of low before when I had it pulled. So now it's up, up and out of the way. They look like they belong. So I'm super happy with that. Uh, Adam, thank you again. Great tool. Uh, and then you need the ends. And we're saving more weight. Cut it probably about 10 inches out. One more thing on the list was putting the door gaskets on here. So when I built the doors, I painted the back of it black, figuring uh, that's pretty uniform. And then the front will paint when we paint the plane. I never did put any gaskets on. I think they tell you to put like foam tape and I don't know, I just kind of saw that wearing out. So I bought a couple of different ones. I bought this double gasket, but this is kind of like foam too. Like this rips pretty easy. And then I was trying to find something where I can kind of contour it around the corners. This is more of a rubber gasket. I don't know if you can see, but it's got, you know, it should compress enough. I like this because it has more sticky area, just a little bit more, but I think I'm going to try this. So end of the day if i gotta replace it later i'll replace it later but if we do 
get a first flight. We want to make sure there's no drafts for our test pilot. I just trimmed the round part up there with some flush cuts put a little relief cut here that one's fine this one's not so accurate and uh, I guess I should probably make sure it still fits and you can close the door that's a good fit yeah I like it I mean hopefully that won't bend out too much with heat and what have you, but we do have a, a gap here. I don't know, did I cut that inside piece too short? Hmm. The rest of it fits good though. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, I put a bolt in the center console so that doesn't go flying. Gotta have that in so our headphone jacks work and tightened up all of this wiring this was kind of still a little bit up in the air so this big plug actually unplugs the entire center console that's why we have that here so yeah you can unplug this cut that and the whole thing slides out this is a modern day usb for updates for that and got all this situated um tightened the air vent hoses um that i'd never tightened <laughs> And kind of just going through making sure everything's tight and I do have to pitch the prop so uh, I'm gonna go back to that now I updated the pitch from 17.5 to 16.5. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but that's actually based on Steve Cox, uh, Clear Direct. So thank you for that. And hopefully that will do the trick. He seems to be happy with that. And uh, retorqued everything. And then afterwards, obviously, go through the manual. And then it says here, typically one degree of pitch changes the static engine RPM by 100 RPM. So we should be close to 2300 now, which is probably uh, good, so uh, time to clean up, clean up this place, make it look presentable. All right, testing, testing. So how do we turn the volume up on that? Audio? Oh, there we go. Oh, nice. All right. Yeah, this will be a test to see if it can read the Garmin with the GoPro resolution. Looks like it does. Okie doke. I think I got all the important stuff done on the uh, punch list. And... Uh, this will probably be, hopefully, the last episode before the inspection. And George has got to do a couple labels and the logbook, registration holder. And yeah, so bear with me. I, uh, once the silicone dries, I got to put the CHTs back in. That takes all of about 10 seconds. I got a mount for the camera, got the doors in, got all the wires secured on the inside. 
I can't think of anything else. Um, spark plugs probably make me the happiest. And uh, as usual, I'm tired. It's been a long day. And I, uh, I'm saying goodbye. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. Hope it's helpful. And uh, keep building. Remember, it's just me doing it. No instructions. See ya.